The Couture 303 Podcast with JJJ Viper. This is an urgent appeal. Are you a DJ, MC, music producer, or even an events promoter? If you have a story to tell about your journey in the dance music scene, then please, please get in touch by emailing couture303 at outlook.com. Your story could help hundreds of people walking the dog, commuting to work, training in the gym, or even doing a shift in work. So please, please share your stories and help relieve the boredom for life of those who survived the 90s. That email address again, couture303 at outlook.com. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I've joined you today in studio. Well, not actually my studio. I've travelled all the way down to it with this, club, it bu- this Buckinghamshire. Yeah. This club, or Cambridgeshire. W- Windsor. <laughs> Windsor. <laughs> I've travelled all the way to Windsor <laughs> to meet my old pal and buddy, Mr. DJ Reckless. How are you, mate? Hi, Jay. I'm great, folks. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time off for doing this, mix. I hope you're good. So we're going to start off right at the beginning. So give us a little shout about where and when you were born, please, Mick. Well, I was born a long time ago, Jay. It was 1973. 1973? Oh, yeah. my God. So what are you now, 49? Well, if you do the maths. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 50 in January. 50 in January? Yeah, man. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. So where, where, where else were you born? Were you born, were you born local to Cambridge? Well, you no. Know, <laughs> I've moved around a bit. I've moved around a bit in my lifetime. And I was born in a hospital called Sefton General. Where you knew. Yeah, yeah. My, my nan used to work in Sefton General Hospital. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, she yeah. was. Yeah, she was yeah. I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I can't remember what she did. Like I was very, very young. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she does. She used to work in Sefton General Hospital when I was a, when I was a wee young boy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to move that round, Mick? So, just, yeah. so it's more in front of you, the mic? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Oh, my God, I can hear you right down here now. <laughs> Very sensual. Hi. So what was it like in your household like for, for like a music? Was it, was it a musical household? Oh, it was, yeah. Like, yeah, my me, me, me mum and dad liked the Motown and all of that. Any, like, all, anything that you could dance to. They yeah? Loved, yeah, my mum was nuts. Any brothers or sisters? Yeah, my me, me, uh, me oldest brother, he was a big UB40 fan. Yeah? So that was like one of my first daily influences because like we used to sit up watching the videos, listening to the music yeah. and all that. Yeah. This is before yeah. YouTube and MTV and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh yeah, a long time before it was like red, red, <laughs> wine and that as well. It was like before you before you were big. Like, yeah. You were all into the bias, all the older lads. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a unique band you before see because obviously the, the the main singer was white and they were very much reggae based, weren't they? Which was at the time quite an unusual thing. You know, this is before you had the likes of Eminem. You know, who, who kind of took black music and, and made it their own. Well, you were the biggest band in the biggest reggae band in the world at one point. Crazy uh, for a, a, a white lead to be yeah. the biggest reggae band in the world. That's, well, that's I, I had um, I had JFMC on my podcast a few months ago when he was telling me he used to be in a, a punk band. Whoa. Like, <laughs> you don't get many Outrageous. black people in a fucking punk band. <laughs> that's <crazy. laughs> Bob though, isn't it? Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did music start to become a thing for you? When did you start to discover that this is going to be like more? More of a passion, more of more of a hobby. Well, this was like a bit of a hidden thing. I, I mean, you probably did it yourself. Sunday night taping the charts. Yeah. And you'd be there, wouldn't you? And you'd like give it a little three second rewind so you didn't hear the fella who was. Yeah. And you just have pure tunes. Uh, that was the thing. I used to, I used to I had a little ghetto blaster. It didn't matter where. I'd have it ready and I'd do it every week. I was yeah. only about 12, 13. But uh, that was like when I first like started. I liked all weird stuff like soft cell and that. Really? And my half fella used to shake his head. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, he could handle you before seeing that, but soft sell, like they wore makeup and they were a bit weird and all that. Yeah. I mean, but that was the eighties though, wasn't it? Because I mean, let's be honest, if you look if you looked at a top forty from the eighties now, they looked fucking bizarre. All the men had makeup on. All the women had fucking ripped clothes on and stuff like that. It, it was it was a, a really unique time for fashion. I think if, if back then if I was if I was an only child, <laughs> but that that was I probably would have been, been walking around with makeup on and everything. You guys can get me a kicked in and that. <laughs> I wouldn't have been as well, because I, I like thought it was fascinating. Duran Duran, even they, they were that cool. They yeah. all wore makeup. Well, that, when I was about, cause I'm, I'm, I'm a little, just slightly younger than you, and I remember the 80s, like, I was a big Adam Ant fan. Yeah. Adam Ant was the fucking bee's knees. <laughs> right. And you, if you watch one of his videos now, fuck me, me, me fucking toes are curling, what's the thing? Right. I used, to, I used to fucking look up to him. Yeah, it was, it's so camp. It was a different thing in Liverpool. Yeah. I mean, you could go into town and there was a few pla- like, weird places and that, but imagine walking around dressed like Adam Ant. 
Ey, wir hören Ich hab den Jump, die Heimer, Mann. Du warst mit dem Fahrstuhl, ja? Ja, ja. Ich dachte mich vorhin an. So, what's so? We're going back to like mid 80s now and you listen to like some soft sell and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, when did you get your, when, so you, you, you're DJing? Source of thing well, with the tape to tape, which we all got a, a little go at. I, I used to have like beer to like break, break dance music and stuff. Okay, like. so I, I started buying my hooks. I even know what the table or not. I just buy them because I heard them in the foyer. Oh, yeah. And I thought if I had them, I'd never forget them. That that was probably one of me, the things that got me into buying vinyl. Yeah, so work. you started buying vinyl before you became a oh, DJ. Oh, yeah, I was buying, yeah. Uh, buying vinyl. Where from? So, um, the first ever album album I got. I bought Pink Floyd the Wall and I got off the bus with Vernon Garson, it's only about 13, and I got it out to show one of my mates, and it's a double record, isn't it? Yeah. And one of them just fell out. <laughs> smashed on the floor, I swear, I was cried. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Bad luck. Smash hits. Oh, I was <laughs> devastated. I never replaced it neither because I was just, uh, just <laughs> devastated. That's the bad taste in your mouth. I think it just got um, on tape or something yeah the side one so where, where, where did it progress from there then something you, you bought your pink flower vinyl when did but you start that, buying like more dance related vinyl that was from ATV and like, like well I discovered that there was other shops that sold like other stuff that you couldn't get ATV that came a bit, a bit more interesting and that's when like I found like, like African Bombata and stuff like yes. that and um, but, like, it, was all, it was all American stuff, yeah. But it, it was that electronic, like. So we're we talking late eighties, yeah, eighties, early nineties, eighty six, eighty seven. Wow. It like the electro albums and stuff like that. I, I've yeah. forgotten. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm bad hoarder. Yeah, yeah. So this is like pre rave, really, isn't it? Yeah, <gasps> yeah. Uh, so, so what happened? What, what happened? So you you buy an Africa. The only African bar bomb bar to suck. I can remember. Which was quite big and like so the drone and stuff was Poop and Arnie. <laughs> Arnie, that, that, was, that was the most popular that, one. That was proper cheese, that But then you've got the likes of, um, oh, what's the fuck? This, it samples um, party people. What's what's that? Off? I don't know. They sold out and they, 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 they done like all like cheesy like things with GB40 and that. Did they, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've done. Um, they also done stuff with West Ham as well. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. They're still around, aren't they? They're still doing. I've come back still going around, yeah. They're still. Fucking hell. Hey, it's a fucking bomb, was it? Was Whether it's it? the same people. Yeah, though. was it Pla Planet Funk or something? Planet Rock. Planet Rock, Planet that's it. Oh, and it, it yeah, starts yeah. off with their party people. Yeah, me, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's been ballad, well, hasn't it? Oh, that's it. Part, it's it's yeah, a sample yeah. from Problem, Play, yeah. Problem House Party People, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's Nick off that. <clears throat> so when did it so Poop and, Poop and Arnie, African Bombata, where did it go from there? How was it, how was it progression to you becoming. You know, a DJ, was it something that came about well, organically or? Yeah, back then it was like, you didn't even have MTV or nothing. Yeah. But, you, but you would see DJs spinning by, like records in the background on like top, top of the pops and all yeah. that. So I was sort of aware that like there was a thing going on with two turntables and then yeah. the dance, big dancing scene and all that. That was, so I had an idea what it was and all that. Um, I, but I still weren't really interested in going and getting a pair of decks. I just wanted to buy records and have the records. So you were doing it more just to build your record collection up, yeah? So I wouldn't forget the chunk, because I love the tunes, I just didn't want to forget what they were, because yeah. every week there's something different, wasn't there? Yeah. Every week. I mean, like, you go you go out and you wouldn't hear the same song the week after, would yeah. you? It was, it so was, so it was you were going out at this point? Uh, no, I was, I was about 15, I think yeah. 16, where did start coming out, like? Where did you start going? Um, I went to a few of the cheesy like clubs and then the state in 1988. Yeah, I was only a kid. Eight, yeah, yeah, I was there, uh, 15, uh, like 16, something like that. Um, Who was playing in the state back then? Mike Nolan, it was. Was it? Yeah, yeah I'd heard of him before I'd gone there. Like, so this like is this pre quad are we talking? Now? Yeah, 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 yeah. The state in 88. State, oh, yeah. So, so what happened then? So when did you obviously at this point you've discovered the dance music's a thing. You've discovered the rave scene. Like Acid House, as it was yeah. earlier. Uh, is that what they played in the state back then, Acid House? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. That's, it was Acid House and like it, like, um, it like Italia House and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like the DFC stuff and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, was, it was incredible because it was just like, you'd never heard nothing like it before. There's, you know there's I mean? never going to be, I mean, obviously you had the swing in the 60s and in the 90s and, and the late 80s, that rave, seeing that rave culture. I don't think it'll ever be the piece of that. I really don't. And maybe, maybe 20, 30 years from now, something else will come up. Mm. But it was, it was a defining era as much as I think it was the sixties, especially musically. <coughs> I really do believe that. I thought it would have come around again. I think of 30, I think. But yeah. Like, 
I mean, are you look at these festivals now that like sell out like twenty thousand people and all that? Yeah, it's all old school. They're not doing bad, are they? Yeah, but, but <laughs> all, all the ones in, in you know in the north of England, especially, it's, yeah. it's old school, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can, you can't beat the nineties music. No. You really can't. No. I, I very rarely play much outside of the nineties myself. Techno. Unless it's like, yeah, yeah, it's it's techno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. All the so you're in the states in nineteen eighty eight. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, were you aware that you wanted to be a DJ at that point? Nah. No, 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 no. no. Just well, enjoying it for what it was. Yeah, I wanted to be the lad who was on the bar with the lasers, but I was fucking <laughs> too, too powerful to get on there. In case anyone's seen, I was only a kid to get kicked me out. Uh, so, so, did you not have decks at this point? No, no. Not at all, no? No. no Any of your mates have decks? Um, the, the first time, well, I, I, my mate was a DJ, but not that sort of DJ. Yeah. So, I used to go around to his with my records and that, and like have a little, but he didn't have pitch control or nothing yeah. like that. Was he a, the Buffy's Open DJ? Yeah, oh, mate. He's uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's he's really the Buffy's Open. The Buffy's Open, I said the Buffy's Open. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so, he made you understand. He it? was him, he was. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we like, just used to, let me, he used to borrow his gear and like, set it up for the lads and yeah. like, bang tunes out and all that. That was the first taste of DJing. So, to people, yeah, like just playing play dance music and with, that. with no pitch control, no pitch control, but it's yeah. <laughs> See these, these young kids now, they don't, they don't understand. They don't know they're born. You don't know you're born, kids. If you listen to this, we fucking had to rough it in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, yeah, it's fun, <laughs> So when did you get your first set of decks, or did you start DJing before that? No, I, I was um, eighteen, and. Uh, my mum said, no, you can't, no, you can't, you can't have them in your room, no, 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 Don't no, you waste can't. your money, son. No, you can't, you can't, you can't. Get a proper instrument like a guitar. <laughs> she came all ill and one day and discovered, like, you got them. <laughs> <laughs> so what were they? Uh, they the um, Pro 150s, they were. You know what, I, I, uh, uh, this is episode 16 of the podcast, uh, and I think of all the DJs I've interviewed, I'd probably say... Nine out of ten of stars on Pro 150s. It's just a fucking standard, isn't it? Do you know what, right? I was that happy when I got my Techniques. I just gave them to some lad. I didn't know. I can't even remember who it was. Yeah, he's kept the Pro 150s, you mate. He's giving them to a bit of Dexy. I've got some nerdy hard lad. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> didn't even see anyone else. Just got so if you're listening to this, if you've got the legendary set of DJ Records Pro 150s, they might be worth upwards of 10% more than what they were back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember buying them from him. Um, what was the. the this music instrument shop in town, the um, drums, drums, drums oh, and all that. Fucking hell! I can fucking see it now. The big one on the big one on the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's oh goes. fuck me! That's gonna fucking do my head. <laughs> uh, it'll come to us. But I know what you mean. The, yeah. It was a, it's all like fucking cellos and pianos and guitars. Yeah. Rushworths. In the, uh, maybe it was next to Rushworths. Curly's. Curly's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Curly. like Curly music. Yeah. It's itself Dexter. Oh, mate, don't be got that then. You'd have to edit it on early. Curly music. Oh, that's yeah. what I mean. <laughs> So you got your techniques from Curly music or you put one? No, we've got one fifty. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And how long does that have them for? About eight months, nine yeah. months. And then progress to the, what, to the 12 cents. Yeah, I knew that it would want, I knew that it wouldn't be a waste of money. Yeah. Uh, so, do you remember your first actual gig mixing with, with actual turntables? Uh, <laughs> um, I think that it was the Mardi Gras. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There, yeah. yeah. It was our night. It was only a Monday night, like. But that, we got Philly and that over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He offered to come and play. Sure, off. St- stuck him on the fly, of course, and that was yeah, it was a decent night, lad. But so what, what? What are we talking about now? Ninety one, ninety two. No, this was about ninety three. Okay, so yeah. he, was, he was in the drone then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd met him through the drone, like. Yeah, yeah. So you used to go to drone a lot, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's. If anyone's listening, this is how me and Mick met. Yeah. Uh, I went to the drone in. 97? 96, 97. Yeah, ni- ni- well, I used to go there. I went, first went when it was 94, but obviously I never spoke to you there. I didn't, I didn't know you were there. And um, I'd handed the tape in. I'm sure it was 96. Let, let, 90, let, let 90, go, yeah, winter 96. Yeah, when, when Princess Diana died? The first, the, first, um, the first time I ever played in the drone was when Princess Diana died. What? Ashley was there. That was and there was, there, was, there, was no, um, there was no internet back then. No, there wasn't. <laughs> so I, I'd come home buzzing fucking made up I'm probably the only person in the fucking city or the country who's fucking not mourning we found out as soon as we came out and didn't even have any music on all the way home got back to the party and sat there in silence for about five hours mate just watching the news madness isn't it I, I, had, I, had, I just come home and went to bed went and asked me mates all buzzing I played this home last night he went to the Princess Diana I went what do you mean what about it he went she's dead it's like fuck off bigger news than you playing the drums yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'll fucking steal my thunder. If you're listening, <laughs> die. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wiped out there. So you can have this night in the Mardi Gras with Philly. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind, was it Was it similar kind of music? Well, I think we were just banging out loads of evolution stuff and all that. Yeah. And uh, Philly came and done his, his thing, like proper like, grown up trans music, dead good professional. And then I think by the time I went on, I was like drunk and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Started skipping the records everywhere. Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> just swamming and all that but it was great for me today it was what I say it was a Monday night so did you, did you build up a bit, of a, a bit of a rapport with Philly back then or was it just yeah I, I got on with Philly yeah. like, like really well like yeah. 40 billion lot yeah. like, so. I think it was it was um I think it was I think it was underrated yeah I'll be I, that, for, for, that. For what he used to play obviously at, when, when Philly there was there was Philly and Rusty wasn't it yeah. double impact crew yeah and then obviously six came and it became six and Philly then, yeah. and I think because six was so good yeah. and so unique at yeah. that time, and and it and again at the time his skill base was pretty much second to none. Well, he made car look like all the league and that didn't he? Exactly. Yeah. No one does that, really. So if you if you sidekick yeah. is Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> I mean, and you're an all right be, football you're going to like, get forgot aren't you? you you need to be messy don't you <laughs> exactly yeah and I think uh, I think to, to Philly's um, detriment he, he, he was up against six because yeah. I, I, I listen to the, the old tapes now and I think I enjoy the Philly sides more than the, than the six sides sometimes yeah. he, he takes on a bit of a musical journey and he, and he played stuff that no one else played and yeah you know, he really, really, really was good so from there the Mardi Gras did he put any more nights on um, no it was just no, I, I didn't, okay, I, that just happened because I knew a lad who knew somebody who said, yeah, I'll do this. Yeah. So I went, oh, yeah, I'll do it. So why did you end up playing in the drum? It, Steve Stead. Steve Stead, so this is Steady? Yeah. Yeah, and Ste- what was Steady's position in the drum? But he, he was the, he, he, he booked the artists. Really. Okay. Like, but um, I, I, I knew them all, because I've been going there for years, I knew them all, I knew Glenn and all that. Yeah. Like, but fucking excellent. And I, I was always there at the front of the stage, they all knew who I was. So like when it came about and all that, they were all like quite happy to like give me a go, you know what I mean? And it was like a bit of a, not like an open mic night, more like an a, a upcoming artist night, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's hard, it's hard, it's, yeah. Yeah, upcoming artist night, yeah. So we're talking, this is like about 95, 96? 96, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, Steve Cocky was on as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, he's there. Yeah, I thought, oh my God, like that. <laughs> What am I going to do with like, you know what I mean? Was it the same night you were on us? Nah, he was on a month before me, so I, I had a yeah. month to get proper anxiety, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so he, he just, he just I, I don't know if he went every week and all that, because that, that affected me, because I was there every week watching, and the next minute I was behind the decks. Because he was still, I mean, he, he, he was still one of the boys back then, wasn't he? Oh, he was still, he still big time, really, wasn't he? I mean, he's, he's huge now, he's just reminiscent and all that kind of stuff, but... It was like he, he just knew all the dogs, all of them, and he smashed it like. I yeah. wanted them to be shit. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, Sorry, you were, Steve, you, were, you like, listen to this. I'm trying to get Steve on the podcast. I've, I have asked him, and, he, I, and he's accepted, but obviously, you know, with the radio station and reminiscent, he's a very busy guy. Yeah. But if you listen to this, Steve... Yeah. Um, yeah. He blew me head off. Have you got I anything believe. to say, Michael? He blew me head off. <laughs> Honest to God. Would you, want, would you like to apologise, Michael? Yeah, it was. He still done better than I did, but he's, he's, good he's, he's good taking two good. fingers up here. Yeah. I know, it's it, it, it was a good night. That, like, I can remember all them nights like the yesterday. You know? yeah. yeah, I think yeah. If, I think around that time. We've had a mutual friend, Kev Mack, you know, yeah, Kev Mack, yeah, the yeah. DJ promo. Yeah. I think he was on around that yeah, time he, as well. He was not the one I ever watched before, you bastard. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. Uh, this is fucking swear you want. Have you seen this girl come out and you think, ah, these are all locals, these are. Yeah. Why are they, why are they, they booking the Southerners? Sorry again, guys. But, <laughs> despite all that, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, and I'm, I'm not a fucking expert, like, but... Yeah. I don't think Steve Cocky returned to the drum after that, did he? I don't think it was really his scene anyway. He was, uh, he was more down the kind of piano and house and, and you know, yeah. happier stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think Kev Mack ever played again. But you, however, got your feet under the fucking table and stayed there for a long time, didn't you? Well, as I say, I was going there anyway, really. So, so but, how did that come out? Obviously, every, everybody else kind of got one go. How did you end up? Well, they went there the week after, really. I went there the week after, with my records, and I didn't, he told me to come with yeah. my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was going anyway, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, it was... It, Just a natural progression? It, that's how it seemed. I mean, like, I was like, I, I, I was made up, you know yeah. what I mean? I was buzzing my head off. Yeah. I, 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 every week, I, I did, weren't expecting nothing. Yeah. 
fordi du skal bare bare have det Ja. Kunne jeg kun bare have kun bare have svig. Sådan sagde han. Og du var DJ Reckless, but the first time you're on the flyer. <laughs> Det er den på DJ Rackers, det er det. Ja, det er nemlig smægt, den lige. Nå, det er smægt, der var også ikke mægt. Ja, det er meget smægt. Men de, obviously... I wonder how you got a name like that, mægt. Men, men, jeg synes, det er det er den nye måde, der får mægt. Han har jo så meget for at lave, men det her. Nej, jeg har joked a few times, like some people, they've got a DJ name, and it's quite fitting. And you, you've got mad mech yeah. and reckless. And at one point, I think it's fair to say, you lived up to your name. My name? Don't pick it. I wasn't going to be called DJ Careful, was I? <laughs> <laughs> DJ Driving Miss Daisy. Uh, uh, so, how did the name come about about Re- Reckless? Uh, again, like, back in the early 80s, um, Breakdance was the movie. DMC was called Reckless and he was cool. I think it was. I see, yeah. Uh, uh, he, was the, uh, he was DMC and the... Um, The DJ was called The Glove. I, was, I thought that was the most pretentious <laughs> DJ name ever. And he had the glove on. I mean, I used the pitch control with a big diamond take glove on. I don't know. The but, Michael Jackson of mixing. Yeah, I think it was just good editing <laughs> in the movie, la. <laughs> but, honest to God, the, um, the MC was brilliant, la. I, it, it, that, he affected me. I, I think I wanted to be an MC before I wanted yeah. to be a DJ. But I just couldn't do it. Never yeah. tried it, no? No, no, no. no. I can rap. I think there's a, there's, <laughs> rap. there's a real... I can rap along. <laughs> <laughs> there's a real art to MCing, and it, it's something... I've, I've, I think, I think when, when we went to Northern Ireland, I ended up fucking MCing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a go, like, but yeah. it's not something I'm good at. It, 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 there's a real skill to it, and there's a real art form to, you know, know when to fucking shut the fuck up yeah, as well. I mean, a good MC is... Like, They can make or break a night guard. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think an MC can make a good night great, yeah. but he can a bad MC can make a good night fucking shite. Yeah. You know, and it, I prefer the host style, mate. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, 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 like cyanide. Less know. is more. Oh, me. Exactly. Less is more. And, you, and the, the, when they, they do it, do it, and they do come out and give it the, the bifters, they know when to do it, don't they? And you appreciate it more. Yeah. It's like yeah. you've got a school teacher yeah. who's always fucking shouting. You don't listen. No, no. You've got no. that one teacher who's yeah. calm and then flips his fucking lid. You yeah, fucking yeah, listen. Yeah, yeah. You sit back <laughs> in your chair, don't you? <laughs> Sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never again, well, yeah. Yeah. So, any memories from the drone? Because you were there. You, you were there about 18 months, was it? After it till the end. Yeah, you, I, we, I, play, we I played the, the last set in there, was the last record I played in there. You, I played the last set, you played the last record. You come to me with your little puppy dog eyes, I was playing the last set, I remember. And you come to me with a little record in your hand, looking at me with a puppy dog eyes. I went, come on. <laughs> Wizards of Solid. Was that what it was? Yeah. I didn't want to be first, so yeah. I played um, Back to the Top, DJ Brisk. That was my first set. The first tune you played? Yeah. I can remember, and you played that on 45. And it was supposed to be on 33. No, I just played it fast. <laughs> yeah, I, and you stopped there. I thought, wow, who's this guy? You made me go to the dance floor. I thought, did I thought you do done it on purpose. I flew to the dance floor. And then you started to start again. And I was like, that what? A boss. But like, I think later on you told me that you'd done it by mistake. No, that was there. Uh, <laughs> that was, um, oh, what was it? Uh, Steve Baker, DJ Fours. The first time he ever played in the zone, the deck actually fucked up. That's what it was. He used to do that. Yeah. Wow. He used to, yeah, exactly, yeah. And so everyone was like, oh, fucking hell, a bit of speed call, a bit of gamma. Oh my God, that's the amount of times I had to chase the decks live while yeah. it was gold, what was going on in there. Yeah. Uh, face the mic, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to unplug, you I, had, down, you know. I had to unplug the decks while it was live. Uh, just pop it all. There you go. Uh, but, um, but I blow myself up, obviously, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. Plugging new ones in. I had to go into, <laughs> I had to go into the, the, the um, room two once and take the decks off Nibs. Because Shut off. Because we had no decks left. Nibs was a fucking legend. I know, well, yeah, but he? you wanted room one open. <laughs> 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 and the decks weren't working. We had to take one out of the uh, bad that. Uh, oh my God, so yeah. Nibs, Nibs had one deck. Uh, I don't think it happened again. He brought his own after yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah. He, he sort of wouldn't mind speaking to Nibs. He was a bit, well, of, a bit of a quiet legend, wasn't he? He's very, he's another good DJ. Like a giraffe, wasn't yeah, he? He was yeah, fucking yeah, tall as fuck, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen him at the, um, I went to a drum reunion, fucking hell, about, must be about eight or nine years ago now, when the, uh, the Carl Academy, the O2 Academy, and he was there. Yeah. I think he'd been playing and I missed him, but he, he was there, like, and I, I, I met him outside, like, I had a little, had a little chat to him. So from the drone. Any memories? Any 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 special nights there? Cause you, did you play with? Would you be there when like there was any like? Because it when you started there, <coughs> it had started to go towards more like the kinetic pandemonium uh, hardcore, hardcore route. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. that was more your forte. Yeah. I'm mean, right in saying yeah, that back yeah, then, yeah? yeah, yeah. So we were. So you you were you there when they had all like some of the fucking 
like Dougal and, and Vard well, I, I was playing I, I was doing all the, the, the kinetic things and all that but when I first started in 1996 the, 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 the biggest night I ever played in the drums was that New Year's Eve 1996 yeah and I had been playing hardcore but like it was a hardcore lineup for the and it was a, a big night and it was it was like souls out and all that so I went and played the dead slow transit like tricks transit like yeah. an aerial one like in the middle of the night just before I think I went on after Stu Allen and yeah. it was like you're taking it down a bit there. He noticed while I was playing because he was going like 160 BPM and I was like yeah. starting off at like 145. And then, but from the drone, we were all like V-Tax and all that. Exactly, yeah. Did it? So I, thought, bomb, I, bomb, I was confident bomb. that it'd go down all yeah. night. Like, no, it fucking did. I was, yeah. I was there that night as a punter. Yeah. I remember, it, I remember yeah. it very well. So the, the, the kinetic things come because you actually played in kinetic as well, the Nick Club kinetic. I, I, I didn't play in the Pledge Bowl, played, played in reality. reality. reality yeah. yeah, time and space. Yeah. Played there loads, aren't yeah. yeah, I played there once, I yeah. think we as we were walking in the drone, you were walking out and yeah. you were going to Stoke to yeah. play. Uh-huh. You were playing the drone when you were going to Stoke. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I only played there the once and I I'll be I'd, it was good, yeah. but I got a bit of a shock because like the fucking decks were on them, like um, in the middle of the dance floor, more or less. Yeah, on them platform things, yeah. like the wobbly things. <laughs> and I, I, I always remember, like I, had, I used to have a little go at scratching. I wasn't amazing at it, but it was all right. And I couldn't do it because mm. the fucking decks were moving. It was like, it was like trying to fucking yeah, it was like was like trying to section on water, mate. Yeah, trying to take, but you couldn't turn the volume and all that. <laughs> the tape on the mixer. Yeah, yeah. But I always remember thinking, like, how the fuck does DJ Sai scratch in here? Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Didn't he used to take like a little, like, little, like, paddle? Like, 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 like a cross fader thing. Did he? Sure, he did. Back, Maybe he did, yeah. Back in the, in the day, I've seen a few that DJ Hell had one as well. No, or the L. DJ L, yeah, yeah I remember yeah, that. Like, 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 he turned up to fucking drone ones like a fucking big juice head, didn't he? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. But well, he'd been there before, and he was about nine stones. Then he yeah, turned up about three months later. Yeah, come back about 19 stones, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll be back. Because he, he did the um, the remix of Now Is The Time. Was it, no, um, Inferno. Yeah, yeah. No, Which, that was DJ Hell. No, it wasn't. It was it was uh, Scott Scott Brown and L, E double L. Sorry, we got a, we got a guest. What, what's the, what's the dog's name, Mick? It's Mookie's in the house, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to say? Uh, no. Uh, okay, lad. <laughs> so after then, um, when the drone shut, so yeah, we pl- we played the last ever night in the drone. Yeah. Mick, I remember Mick. you dressed up as Father Christmas. Yeah, that was that was the, the yeah. <laughs> I had the fucking full on Santa suit on. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the only thing that gave me away was me, and I, I, I've said this before and it's still quite embarrassing, it was me white Kappa trainees. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knew it was me because of me white Kappa trainees. And we, we were playing silly sling over the foot or snow <laughs> over the clouds, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> boss, shit, that oh, one oh, no, boss. <laughs> oh, God. Never so, forget that, lad. So after the last night in the drone, we, we kind of still stayed in touch and we did a um, a night in town called Masters of Bounce, didn't That was it, yeah. That, that, I thought that was decent. That though. was decent. I mean, yeah. who did we have on for that? It was all just local lads, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. had, we had uh, like, a City G on. Yeah. Obviously, me, you. Um, yeah. Four. four. Edge, that was on the mic. Edge, Edge on the mic. Yeah. Uh, Leighton. Yeah. MC, uh, Express MC on the mic. Yeah. I think we had Frosty on. Yeah. I think we had, um, oh, what was his name? Dad Nardaker. What was his fucking name? Oh, I can't remember. Um, MC... Fucking hell, I can't remember. There was, we had, it was, no, there was a big crew on, like... Yeah, was, uh, there was something all, all, all a bit of a close-knit thing. Right, it was decent, that. It was decent. And from that... They had to do knocking people back. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> it was, it was, that was the aquarium, yeah. when it just turned into it. Before that, it was called uh, Jack's. Yeah. Jack's Nightclub. Yeah, yeah. And it just changed the aquarium. aquarium. Yeah, it was decent. We had those sort of fuck good little nights Yeah, but when we done that Masters of Bounce, I think the aquarium had just decided that they were just going to start playing house music in there. Yeah, and, and we, <laughs> we, t- we turned up 180 BPM. Smashed it in there. Looked down the nose at us, didn't he? Yeah. So from that... While we were playing there, there was. Do you remember the the Irish guy who came up to me and me. And, and we ended up going over to Northern Ireland. Yeah, I ended up having to get a passport that I didn't need. Is the, I didn't need a passport. <laughs> and, I, and I can remember going over there as well. And it, I mean, it was a boss experience and that. But I, I was the only person that got to say it. I don't know. I felt like I was being tired. And everywhere I went, I thought, "Nah, this is nice. Why did I buy me?" The, and, the main thing I remember about that was we got on the sea cat. Remember going down. Um, Towards Anglesey and, and Hollyhead in, in John's dad's car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, me, me, you, John, Rob. Was silly with us as well? Or was it just us? us it almost can't be, can it? If John's dad was driving, I think John me, was me in the you, front. Me, you, Rob, I would 
Me, you, Robbo and John. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, yeah. you, Robbo, John, yeah. his dad. Yeah. That might have been a space there, might there. Was, was, was that definitely it? Yeah. 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 But yeah, I remember we got there and we got on the sea cat. I remember we were all fucking walking sideways and all that. And I remember, I remember going to a fruit machine <laughs> and putting a pound in and it went, good thing. And I, I looked down the slot and I could see all money backed up. So I got the fella and I said, I am Ace. I said, I'm just playing this machine there and got carried away. I've put loads of money in, but it doesn't seem to have registered. And he come and put, put this thing down. I've uh, got about half fucking 25 quid. <laughs> I've fucking made up. And I haven't even won. It's just all backed up. Uh, you did win. You did win. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did win when I was even playing it. So after, after, so any other places after after that? Well, um, not not so much. I, I've I started me all night goosebumps. Okay. Get Nibs came and played uh, Did he? on the second one there, yeah. but um, it was on that. Who else is having? Just all local lads. Yeah. Like, but it, it just didn't seem to take off. And no. Of, what year is this? Yeah, this was only about two thousand fourteen. 2000 okay, 15. so the re- recent recent then, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. There's been bits of that, but as I say, I've never really pushed myself as a DJ. Yeah. I've, oh, I've never stopped buying records. Yeah, you've, ne- you've never stopped DJing, have yeah, you? Yeah, I've, uh, I've kind of been in and out of the scene a little bit, but you, you've kind of consistently... I mean, you've still got your, you've still got your vinyl decks, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Do you, uh, do you only play on vinyl? Uh, no, I've got a pair of CDJ phones as well. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. decent, then. Yeah, but you take memory So your current setup now is, what, you've got 12 tens? And... Uh, no, 1200s. 1200s, the silver ones? Yeah, yeah, well, you can't have nice. the bed, bed covers and all on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could be bad on it. And yeah. um, we see DJ 400s. What, what, how do you find DJ with um, CDs and stuff? Because a lot, a, lot a lot of the vinyl purists, a lot of people like kind of our age and older, frown upon digital DJ and they don't like it. What are your thoughts? Um, I like, I don't mind playing new music on, on it. I, I, I won't play old school. Really? No, and I won't play. No, anything that I've got on vinyl, I don't want to be playing on my CDs. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 And I'm not, not that like. I prefer I prefer the digital thing. I mean, I, I haven't even got CDJs. Yeah. I've now got a, um, an RX3, which yeah. is just you put your USB in and you you. Your whole collection. Everyone should have an RX3. Yeah. As a vinyl DJ, I'm still, everyone should have an RX3. <laughs> it's a beast. Yeah. It is a beast. It's perfect for me. I'd, I'd like the XZ, like, but maybe if you're listening, Santa, I've been, I've been a good boy this year. <laughs> <laughs> what you've got your RX3, you can just give your bed your wages then, can't you? Exactly. You don't need that else, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Karen, the trailer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him next to me. Yeah. Uh, stop fucking crying. Yeah, can't be <laughs> so, what music production? That's something you ever dabbled in? Uh, only a little, like, little play. Like, I've never took it seriously. Not on, yeah. As I say, I, I, I love the tunes, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that, that's, uh, and then it just becomes a habit, doesn't it? Chasing certain things and yeah. you know, uh, And I, I've liked all like, the genres as well. I don't just like, like hardcore or trance or not. Got loads of house music that I, that yeah. I just love. I, that you've got to ask because great tunes are great tunes, aren't they? Yeah. So what are, what are you doing now, DJ? Why are you still still gigging or what? Yeah, uh, do loads of streaming. Loads. Streaming. Like, yeah. And where can, where can we catch you streaming then? Um, hard attack DJs. Uh, Jay Nico. Okay. I've been on that now for about. Must be coming up to three years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoy it. All the oh, people on it. We're hopefully getting. Uh, is it Jay Nico? Is he? Yeah. I'm hopefully yeah. getting Jay on on the podcast soon. I spoke to him like. Uh, yeah. He's going through a little bit of all now, isn't he? With, with, with health and stuff. He's, he's moved away, has he? For so he's setting himself up down south. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah he's moved by us to by Windsor. Oh, right, so <laughs> me, yeah. is that, was that him more than the corgis before? <laughs> he's been new neighbour. He, he, he lives across the pond. Does. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lake. Yeah, yeah. Come well, on, don't yeah. take the piss. I've seen him on his horse before. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So we're going to go now with a couple of quick fire questions. DJ Reckless, I will take your first answer and your first answer only. Are you ready? I am. Rocky 3 or Rocky 4? Rocky 2. First purchase if you won the lottery? Alex (laughs) (laughs) 3. A pint or a pie? A pint. Favourite TV show as a child? Rent a ghost. <laughs> With Mr. Claypool. <laughs> Austin Powers or Ace Ventura? Austin Powers. 80s or 90s? Oh, 80s. 
Celebrity you'd most like to perform for, and I don't mean sexually, by the way. Oh, I was going to say Britney Spears then, but I am. Um, <laughs> I'll stick with my first answer. <laughs> Star Bar or Double Decker? Oh, Double Decker. Van Damme or Jackie Chan? Jackie Chan. Mega Drive or Super NES? I'm going to have to rush you. Super NES. Super NES is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one thing you'd rid from the world? Um, war. If you could have dinner with anybody living or dead, who would it be? Vladimir Putin. I've got to ask why. <laughs> so I try and encourage him to stop the war. Stop being a knobhead. Stop the war. If you call him a knobhead, he'd probably make it worse. Yeah, he'd yeah, be nicer, it's, wouldn't it? It's, it's frowned upon yeah, that, isn't it? I'd use my diplomatic skills to try yeah. and get him to just chill out, man. If you could see any artist live on stage, again, alive or dead, who would you go and see? Stu Allen. Stu Allen. Yeah. A legendary. Yeah, rest, rest in peace, Stu. Yeah. And the final question on this little outing... What's the best podcast you've ever been on? Oh, without a, without a doubt, it's going to be the Jaws one. <laughs> the Kids Your Own podcast. With Jay Bay. I mean, it's been an experience that I'll be having a good about. So that's it for me then, Mick. Any, any, any shout you want to mention? Any, um, any mentions? You know what, right? A, a, a big shout out to everybody who listens to Art Attack DJs and everyone else. Tune in to our Saturday day. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Mick. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Jay. Take care. See you later. Thank you. Right, so we're going to finish off now with a little bit of music. Uh, this is my latest track. This is called Back Through the Tunnel. And this is inspired by uh, the likes of DJ Philly, uh, Lauren Garnier, Tricks and stuff like that. But it's a bit of a crossover as well because it, it goes a little bit big room trans style as well. So I hope you like it.
The Couture 303 Podcast with J J J Viper.